guys. So this is for module 13.4, problem solving with trigonometry. Our essential question, uh, as basic as it is, how can you solve a right triangle? Okay, um, that's one way to put it. Now, why do we care so much about triangles? Um, they are used not just in engineering. Uh, if you look at a ramp, a ramp is really just a triangle in a three-dimensional realm. If you look at video games, all those objects that are in your video game that's being rendered by your graphics card uh, or your GPU is rendering triangles that are folded around each other. And the more triangles there are, the tiny little ones, the more detailed and realistic objects look. Um, so we use triangles not just in engineering for trusses, but we also use them for video games. We use them for ramps. We, we use triangles a lot. So that's why problem solving. Uh, is kind of something to talk about. So we use trigonometric ratios already to find side lengths. We use Pythagorean theorem to find the third missing side length. And uh, we also need to derive the area formula used in trig because not every time will the area of a plot of land will be based off of a square. Sometimes it'll be based off a uh, triangle with a different degree other than 90 degrees. So let's talk about these situations. So first things first, we have to derive the area formula. We have to understand where it comes from. And I know you're like, Mr. Webb, I already know where the area formula comes from. Um, it's just, you know, A equals one half times base times your height. Right? And uh, I, I would totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Base times height. Yeah, sure. But what about for triangle ABC? For triangle ABC, we do not know if it's a right triangle or not. We just don't know. Let's say they only gave you angle C. You know, they gave you a certain degree. And they didn't say anything about the height. All right. So how do you plug in the height if we don't know this is a right triangle? So there comes our, itch our issue. So let's say they only gave us theta, all right, for angle C. Now the altitude that they drew here is H. Okay, so that's the altitude. Altitude. All right. Now, who is the altitude in terms of what side? Is it the opposite, the hypotenuse, or the adjacent of theta? So what is the altitude? The altitude would be the opposite, right? Now, we already know A is the base of the whole triangle, triangle ABC. So base, it's the base, because it's all about that base, of triangle ABC. So sweet. So we already know the base. All right. So let's say they gave us, I don't know, B. All right. Now, if we break this down, we already know that B, so this altitude, if this was drawn, would be the opposite of this 90 degree. And every time the opposite side of a 90 degree angle should be the hypotenuse. Now, who uses the opposite and the hypotenuse? And that would be sine, right? So sine of theta, so we still have 1 half times the base, which is really just A, OK? So I'm going to mark that for now. But as for the height, the height is going to equal sine of theta, OK? Now. Let me be a little bit more descriptive here in this process of what I'm trying to say. Um, there we go. So again, sine of theta. And the reason we're using sine is because we have the opposite in hypotenuse, right? Equals h over uh, b. All right. Now let's go ahead and isolate our h. So how do we get rid of that dividing b? We multiply. What you do to one side, we distribute to the other. All right. So h is going to equal b times the sine of theta. Now remember, I told you a is representing the base, and you know b represented the base, right? So I want you to know I'm going to change that. So instead of one half times b, it's going to be one half times a. 
because A is the base of the bigger triangle that we're trying to find, right? Because we don't know if it's a 90 degree or a right triangle at all. We don't know. So <clears throat> I notice that quick swap, all right? And then H, all right, which is supposed to be the height. Well, again, we know the height of ADC, but we aren't given the height for triangle ABC. But if we use trig, the height would be B times the sine of theta, right? Which is where I got from there. So this would actually be our new formula for our situation, right? Now, theta is really just C, isn't it? Right? It's for angle C. So if you want to be more descriptive, which sometimes that's how they present it, they would just give you the vertice, all right, which is C. So this would be actually the new improved version, all right, using trig, because we do not know if triangle ABC is a right triangle or not, okay? So this is how we derive the new formula, okay? So try to understand it, talk it through, and see what you guys come up with on how you can explain it to me. So before you leave today, definitely drop by and, and go, hey, is it because of this and this and this? And I'll probably say yeah or no, and just get that conversation going with yourself or with your group. All right, now using it, it's way more uh, straightforward. So basically when you're using it, let's say, here's this first example, all right? They're saying basically they gave you the angle of A and they gave you B and C, all right? So you would use this formula, one half times whatever B is, whatever times whatever C is, and sine of whatever degree they give you. Let's say they gave you, uh, how about how about they gave you B, right? And then they gave you the measure for A and the measure for C. Then you'd use this formula. And then lastly, what if in this situation, they gave you angle C, and then they gave you the measure of A and the measure B. So as you can see the pattern, right? It's kind of like sine angle, uh, side angle side. That's kind of the pattern of the area formula. You need at least two sides, and in between those two sides is an angle, all right? So let's go ahead and see an example finally, all right? Application. So let's say you had this plot of land, and they had, again, your angle, which is 142 degrees, one of your sides, and another side, okay? So what's the area for this guy? Well, let's apply the formula. Area equals one half times 3.2 meters, right? That was one of our measurements, times another one of our sides that was given, 4.7 meters, times the sine of 142 degrees. So in your calculator, I think you do 142 sine times 4.7 times 3.2, and then just divide by two because that one half is gonna multiply to whatever you get. So let me go ahead and type it in my calculator. Cool bean. So if you do 142 degrees uh, sine, you should get 0.61566. Don't worry about rounding yet, just multiply 4.7. Okay, multiply by 3.2 and then divide by two. And you should get an approximation of, and remember area, there's a meter times a meter, so you're gonna get meters squared at the end, okay? So you should get approximately 4.629, um, and I'll tell you what, I wanna go ahead and round up to six point, or 0.63 square meters. So that would be the um, approximate area. Good for taxes, good to know for taxes. And also to check your property, if you do have a backyard like this, um, you definitely want to make sure you're not being overtaxed on your real estate taxes. So something to know, something to know. The more you know, and that rainbow comes across, right? So <clears throat> instead of the rainbow, unfortunately, uh, your turn number one. All right, so use the formula, and they gave you enough. They gave you enough. Set it up. Use your calculator. All right, example four, solving a right triangle. So let's say you're trying to build a shelf, all right? Um, it goes out for seven inches. Sweet. And then you have to uh, figure out uh, this brace. So you, you already know 
Okay, at least your friend says, hey, you know, it's going to be, the brace is going to be nine, nine inches long. And you're like, okay, cool. But then again, you're like, okay, what is the angle? Like maybe you have to cut the wood or the beam or even just bend it to a certain angle. So you don't know what the angle is, all right? So we can actually use a trig to figure out the angle of your bracket that you need to build, okay? So again, um, they're asking what angle will the brace make for the shelf uh, that's on the wall? Well, let's see. What is seven inches? What is that side in relation to our reference angle that we're trying to find? That's the opposite. All right, sweet. Now, what is the nine degrees? Well, he's on the opposite side of the 90, so that has to make him the hypotenuse, right? And which trig identity uses the opposite and the hypotenuse? That's just sine. So sine of our angle, theta, which we don't really know yet, should equal the opposite, which is 7, over the hypotenuse, which is 9. Okay? Now, how do we find theta? Well, again, we're looking for an angle. So in your calculator, if you already remember, it's just going to be 7 divided by 9, and then inverse or second sine, right? So let me go ahead and check it out. 7 divided by 9. Second sine. And remember, you should be in degrees, all right? So again, sine the inverse, I'm sorry, of sine of this should equal or approximately be 51.05. All right, so in real life, you'd probably just cut a 51 degree as close as you could. If you want to be super exact, good for you. If not, if, not, if you're off by like 0.1 when you try to build something like this, it's not going to be that big of a deal, okay? So again, that's your angle for your brace. And also they did say around to the nearest 10th. So I'm good there. All right. So that's just another example. All right. Heights of buildings. Uh, we've already done this. All right. Um, let's say you walked out 33 meters, or in this case, they gave you a shadow or you knew the length of the shadow already. That's good to know. And um, you had to find the height of the building. Now, let's say you knew this angle. All right, we'll call this angle theta, all right, which is 27 degrees. Now, who is this piece that you already were given according to the reference angle that's already given, 27 degrees? Um, that should be the opposite, right? And then who is the height of the building, right? Let's see, we know that this line over here is the hypotenuse in reference to the theta. And then this side is really the adjacent. So who would you know that uses the opposite and the adjacent? And if your brain went ahead and went, ooh, tangent, that's good. That means you're doing good. Now, tangent of theta, theta is 27 degrees, and that should equal the opposite, which is 33 meters, okay, over the adjacent, which is the height of the building. Now, let's go ahead and isolate H. How do you get rid of a dividing H? Multiply. And what you do to one side, do the other. So you have h times the tangent of 27 degrees equaling 33 meters. How do you get rid of a multiplying tangent of 27? Divide by a tangent of 27. What you do to one side, do the other. So in your calculator, to solve for h, all you have is 33 meters divided by the tangent of 27 degrees. So 27 tangent, or I'm sorry, 33 first, 33, divided by 27, this is the instructions for the calculator, 33 divided by 27 of tangent equals, and you should get your answer. So let me make sure I set this up right. And you should get an approximation of 64.76. And again, we're talking about meters here. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Um, you could have rounded, uh, it, you know, to the nearest uh, hundredth. If you did that, you would have been there. Um, if they really cared about the tenths, which 
they would in real life because a tenth of a meter is a whole bunch. Um, quite honestly, because we're in meters, an engineer would more prefer this. Um, if somebody was super lazy, they'd just say 65 meters, but they're going to be off by a good chunk. Okay, so be careful with when to round, when to not. All right, handicap accessible. So again, um, there's actual state codes. So when you're building a ramp, for example, for your business to make sure that uh, people who can't walk can get up there just fine um, up to your business and not trip or get hurt, um, you want to make sure you're built to code. Um, now, let's say, for example, your state, okay, says you have to have a gradient of 11 degrees. That means your theta from the floor, okay, to the top of whatever incline or foot ledge um, is needed has to be a certain code. Uh, in this case, it's 11 degrees, right? In this case. Now, it's not. And uh, I'll tell you what, I want you to look up California's right now and go ahead and tell me what degree it is. All right. Just just message it up on uh, on Google Classroom. All right. Just say, Mr. Webb, California's, you know, building code uh, for ramps. Uh, has to have this many degrees. And uh, yeah, because that's a fun fact and you need to know that. I mean, it's a f the more you know, right, is the more interesting you really are, I think, as a human. So be aware, be aware. All right, here we go. So basically it's like this. I have a five foot ledge, all right, five feet. And I have to build a ramp that's built to code. So what's the length that my ramp has to be here? Okay. Well, we know that 11 was given to us because maybe that was our state code. And 5 feet is the opposite. And I'm trying to find the length of my base, all right? Because it's all about that base. Well, who is the base in reference to theta or my 11 degrees? All right, is he the opposite? No. Is he the hypotenuse? No. Okay, and again, we're assuming this is 90 degrees here. Now, he is the adjacent. All right, so who uses the opposite and the adjacent? Okay, that's tangent. So tangent of my 11 degrees should equal my five feet over the length of my base, right? So let's go ahead and isolate L. Okay, how do I get, how do I move the L over? How do you get rid of a dividing L? Multiplying what you do to one side, do the other. So for right now, you're gonna have L times tangent of 11 degrees equaling 5 feet. So we're almost there. How do you get rid of a multiplying tangent of 11? Divide by a tangent of 11 degrees. What do you do on one side? Do the other. All right. Now, what does that mean? That means my base will be 5 feet over tangent of 11 degrees. Let's go ahead and plug that into our calculators. Again, you're gonna do five divided by 11 tangent equals, and you should get your answer. So you should get, let me go ahead and use my calculator real quick, make sure it's okay, yep. So you should get an approximation of 25.72. And we're talking about feet, so I'm including that to the hundredths, all right? So that's where my base is. Now, what about my ramp length? So if this guy is 25.72 feet, you can actually find the length of the ramp. So I'll say ramp length, or R. You, you could use Pythagorean. Did you know that? You could use Pythagorean if you wanted. Now, if you did not want to use Pythagorean, okay, we already know that this side is the hypotenuse. So instead of tangent, you'd be always in the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? So that'd be sine. So sine of 11 degrees equals the five over the hypotenuse, which again, we do not know. But notice how it's very similar to this setup. So in the end, for your calculator, you should have something like this, okay? It would look like this, it would look like five divided by the sine of 11 degrees. 
Go ahead and try that in your calculator. And you should get the approximation of twenty six point two zero four. So I'll just leave it as point two feet. All right, now that's for your ramp length. So why do you need to know this? Again, it's not just because if you don't build a, a ramp to code, uh, you can get fined for it. Um, but it's really about just being a decent human being and making things not suck as much for individuals who have, you know, a, ha a hard time uh, getting upstairs. And if you're, you know, if you think you, you don't really care about it as much, just wait till you get old. All right. You definitely want to make sure your kids know their math. That way they can actually build you a ramp that's not too steep. Um, you can get hurt on those. And some countries, they don't acknowledge this. They don't even uh, enforce it. And uh, you, you'll see some really crazy ones out there. If you ever go out beyond America, it's, you know, some countries, they aren't really paying attention to those things. So good to know. Fun facts, okay? Um, also, when you're building something like this, you use a lot of wood and materials, and you, you don't want to buy more materials than you actually need. Or worst case scenario, you pour the concrete and realize you don't have enough wood to hold all that concrete because you didn't do the math. And next thing you know, the concrete just like breaks down what wood you have. And then you just have this big blob of concrete just spilled all over the place. Um, that would suck. All right. So something to be aware of. All right. So your turn number two. Um, again, it looks like you live in the same state. All right. So you still have that gradient of 11 degrees. The only difference is in your situation, you don't have to build it to five feet in height. It's two feet. So now your opposite is two feet. So I want you to find the length of the base, okay? And then I want you to find the ramp length, just like my other example, okay? So go ahead and do that. All right, so here's your homework. Uh, there's a whole bunch of realistic uh, problems in there. That's really good for problem solving. And that should take care of you guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And I just want to point out, not it's not just the human beings who understand logic um, and just making life more bearable. Every animal kind of understands that concept because in the end, I think we all just want to be happy. Uh, all right. Have a great day.